All right, once again, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Penn State Alumni Association's Paint Night. If you have any questions or comments during the Paint Night, um, feel free to drop that in the chat, um, or you're welcome to come off mute to ask a question. We do ask that you try to remain on mute um, unless you have a question, um, just to make it a little bit easier for everyone to hear. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Jackie and we will get started. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lisa. I'm assuming everyone can hear me. If you can nod or a thumbs up. Yeah, okay, all right, excellent. Um, and Lisa, if you could, I don't think I'm able to, oh wait, no, I can spotlight for everyone. Nope, don't wanna spotlight my face, remove spotlight. I want to spotlight the painting here. Okay. All right. Thank you everyone for uh, joining me for another virtual paint session. Uh, just out of curiosity, I know there's some people still coming in. So just out of curiosity, if you have painted with me before, what painting did you paint with me? Let me know in the chat and I can talk about um, what I have set up in case some of you are also getting set up. I've got my fancy uh, palette, which is a box, a lid of a box, and all of my colors are there. We're going to be using lots of black, of course. I've got the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, and, and white. So primary colors, black and white, that's what we're dealing with. Lots of snowman, daisies, cat with pumpkin, awesome. Excellent. Well, welcome back, everyone. Old Maine, that was a fun one. Excellent. So we have some return customers. I love it. Um, so in addition to that paint, um, I've got my trusty big brush, little brush. In case you're wondering, I do love a nice angled flat brush. That's pretty much my go-to. Anything that you have on hand will work, I promise. What else? I do have quite a bit of paper towels here with me because we're going to be doing a lot of um, changing between colors. And I'm just using the one brush. So I'm going to need to you know, wipe off any excess paint before I give my brush a good clean rinse um, and move on to the next color. All right. I think I've done enough yapping. Um, so got about 72 people here. Hopefully we're all ready to rock and roll. Um, please do, if you feel up to it, uh, turn on your, on your video. It's always fun. To, to see uh, people painting. And then I, I'll ask um, you, if you if you dare to hold up your painting for everyone to see, it's, it's for me, it's the funnest part. Anyway, all right. So to paint our pretty little Northern Nights, Northern Lights night sky, we, we, get, we have a really easy job for ourselves right in the beginning. Um, and I call this move pulling a rolling stone because we're just gonna paint this black. We're gonna paint the whole thing black. So anyone who's nervous, any first timers who are just totally freaked out, you think I can't do this, I have no idea what I'm doing. You totally can do this first step, which is just painting the whole thing black. Now, we don't have to go guns blazing here because we want this to dry before we proceed. So I want a nice layer that covers the whole canvas, but I want to I want to spread that paint around as much as possible, just to ensure that I'm not sitting here for a while drying. Having said that, if you do have a hair dryer or a craft gun dryer, um, that might be helpful. I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to kind of wave mine in the air. But again, we don't want this to be too heavy and gloppy because we want this to dry.
you're just joining us, all we're doing right now is spreading a nice thin layer on our canvas in black, spreading around as much as possible so it can dry fairly quickly. And again, as Lisa said, if you ever have a question at any point, you can go ahead and unmute yourself or type it in the chat. Are you, are you thinning it down with water or just the paint? This is just paint. So I'm using, I can show you, um, this is the acrylic paint I'm using. It's the cheapest thing I can find at Michael's. Um, so mine's pretty, and because it's cheap, it's definitely what more watery than what you might have. If you have a craft acrylic, um, you should be fine without adding any water. I, um, and as a note, I never, add water when I'm painting on the canvas here. That's just a, a personal preference. But if you do add water at this point, um, you might get a little streaky and you might not get um, solid coverage. All right. So once I think I've um, spread this paint around as much as possible, I can uh, go ahead and wipe off any excess paint, as much excess paint as I can from my brush on a paper towel. That is going to save my water so it doesn't turn it jet black right away. Although if you're near a sink, then what I usually do is I just run the brush under the sink. But I do wanna wipe off as much excess paint before I do that. And I can give my brush a good clean rinse. And I can kind of, you can kind of tell maybe in the video that in the darker areas, it's still a little wet and up here it's nice and dry already, so. But we will take a moment, um, not only to get everybody caught up, but to give our canvas a chance to dry. So if you are still working, that's totally fine. If you're looking at your canvas and you're like, wow, that is a lot of paint. Maybe you've got a hair dryer or a craft um, dryer or a fan. But what I'm going to do is replace that so you can't see my sink. <laughs> and I'm just gonna kind of wave, wave my canvas in the air. Like I just don't care. And that does a pretty decent job. And as we wait for these things to dry, if anybody wants to show off their pets to me, I love it. So if you are like super proud of your pet and want to show me your pet, I, I will not, I will not be uh, offended by that. <laughs> I love seeing people's dogs and cats. I see lots of great black canvases. Excellent. Oh, I see a kitty. Hey, Brianna. Hi, kitty. <laughs> I love it. Let's see, let me scroll through here. Anybody else? Hi, Kitty. Does Kitty want to paint? Maybe not. <laughs> he was exploring the table with all the yeah. paint. <laughs> I, I definitely have paintings with coffins in them. <laughs> oh, I see, who, who else is there? <gasps> 
Oh no, that's a hair dryer. Thought the hair dryer was a pet. It's not a pet. It's a hair dryer. Never mind. Thought it was a dachshund. It's a hair dryer. Never mind. <gasps> oh, who's this? Hi, kitty. Joe. Joe Lavelle's kitty. Hi. Oh, pretty. <laughs> not actually my cat. It's just visiting. <laughs> okay. Okay. To be, to be clear. <laughs> Let's see, anybody else showing up? Oh, hello, Heather Goods doggy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hi. Oh, what a cutie. Look at those ears. Love it. Thank you for sharing your puppy. Yeah, if ever your pet wants to make an appearance, I love it. Love I only it. have saltwater fish and kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, get them over here. <laughs> here I, can show you, I can show you the tank. <laughs> Very cool. This is our saltwater <laughs> tank. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. So I see we are in business with our hair dryers. I'm gonna kind of wave mine a bit more in the air. And we will sit tight just in case anybody else is just not anywhere near dry. But hopefully your canvas will pass what I call the scratch test. Like you can scratch it, it makes that nice sound to let us know that it is dry. So I think I've passed the scratch test, but we will again, just sit tight just in case anybody else is catching up. Let's see. Yeah, I see some hair dryers were still going. Oh, look at that big kitty. Hello. Kay Christman. Hi. <laughs> this is Mira. Hi, Mira. <laughs> <laughs> oh, our poor cats. We make them wave. So I nice. know. We're so mean. See, still see some hair dryers going around. Now, if you are um, good to go, you think you're dry and ready, if you can just um, give me a thumbs up with uh, the reaction and then I can kind of scroll through and see how we're doing here. I see some thumbs up, still drying. All right, so it looks like we're still kind of like half and half. I would, I would show you my cat, but she's in her basket sleeping. And I feel like that would just be cruel if I woke her up. All right, if you're just joining us, all we've done so far is paint our canvas completely black and wait for that to dry. I think we'll just take Oh, maybe a minute more.
And actually, in the meantime, I've my my cup of water is quite pathetic because um, I I wash my brush. So I'm just gonna dump this and get fresh water. How about that? <laughs> Again, if you're near enough to a sink, um, usually what I do when I'm just painting by myself is I just um, wash my brush after each move under the sink. If I can't get away with just reusing it. <clears throat> All right, just take a little look. And I think all the hair dryers are down. All right. So yes, yeah. let's press on to our next step. I'm still gonna use my bigger brush. And what I'm gonna start to do is I'm gonna start building up um, these, these colors, okay? And they're not going to be as bright as they are right now at, once we start. Okay, so we're going to kind of build build layers of color. The first color we put down, um, I'm going to do blue. And again, it's not going to go down bright. Um, we do that later by adding some white to it. But we just want to kind of add layers and build as we go. Um, rule of thumb: don't don't get too um, like scrub happy because uh, we can what what can happen is we can start lifting the black paint that's down there so no need to like press hard um try to get really flowy and and relaxed here um and i promise there's really no uh way to screw this painting up it's a really fun forgiving painting and um how about i just stop talking and i'll do it so i'm starting with um blue paint on my brush and I'm going to figure out where my blue swirl is. Something like this. Very gentle stroke. I'm just kind of um, almost like I'm icing a cake, right? I don't want to press too hard. I don't want to start inadvertently lifting that black paint. And again, that blue is going to not um, be as bright right away, we'll, we'll deal with that later. But I'm just gonna kind of pull up some strokes here. And we can go down fairly far um, because the name of the game is the lower and brighter the color, the more these trees are gonna pop later. So I'm gonna bring down that blue fairly, fairly low. Jackie, we do. have a question. Um, it says, did you say to dry brush with paper towel rather than water? Um, I To get rid of the black, I wiped with uh, paper towel to get as much excess as possible, and then I rinsed it with water to get it nice and clean. So with these colors, these rainbow colors that we're going to do, we want our brush to be um, as clean as possible when we switch um, into a color that we don't want to mix with. But um, for now, so I've got all this, this blue base down here and I have these little tufts or um, almost flames coming out over here. But I want this section in the bottom left here to turn lavender eventually. So hopefully you can see that right here. So even with this blue on my brush, I can grab a little smidgy smooch of red, technical term, smidgy smooch, and with that red, I can go right over this blue and blend directly on the canvas there. And we will lighten that up later as well. But I'm just kind of giving myself a base. It's almost like a primer to get these colors to sit on that black. <laughs> So 
So again, if you're just sort of catching up, all I've done so far is I got some blue paint, blue paint on my brush and I kind of started putting up these swirls, these flames, okay? Um, they taper at the top, right? Almost like flames. They get skinnier at the top. And I have this little area down here also in blue, but then I added a little bit of red because that's going to eventually turn kind of a lavender color or a light purple. For my next move, um, I'm gonna want to work on green. And if you're like me, I don't have green paint. I only have blue and yellow. So I'll have to make my own, but that means that I can continue to use the blue paint and then I can eventually smudge in some, some yellow. But if you do have what is now purple on your brush, you do wanna wipe that off and get that clean first because if you add purple and yellow, you're gonna get brown. <coughs> so I'm just going to wipe off my brush. I didn't really have too much purple on there. So I'm gonna go grab some more blue and start throwing down where I want this green to be. Again, I'm just using blue now because I do like to kind of mix and blend directly on the canvas. So I've extended my blue and then with that blue paint still on my brush, I'm gonna go grab some yellow. Where's the green? And then with the yellow, I'm going to blend right over top of some of that new blue. So again, I don't have green paint, so I just mix it right on the canvas myself by grabbing yellow and pu putting that over top of some blue. And you can do these swirlies any, any way you like, right? Everybody's is gonna be a little bit different. Again, very gentle strokes, right? We don't wanna start lifting um, the black too much. <coughs> Again, just to reiterate, this is just kind of priming at this stage. We're gonna brighten up these colors a lot more um, in our kind of second round when we add a bit of white to our to our pigment. Again, the name of the game are gentle, gentle strokes, um, having fun with these swirlies. And all I've got so far, in case you're wondering, and sometimes the colors don't show through on the video perfectly, but all I've got is a blue base, but I've got three colors because I added red for purple and I've added yellow to get some green. Becky, we have another question. Sure. How do you keep all of your colors from getting muddy when you dip in a different color? Right, so I, if, if I'm worried about that, then I will always wipe off as much excess paint as I can on my paper towel and then give it a good clean rinse and then dip, okay? But like, because I know that I'm just gonna make green, I don't have to worry about the blue on my brush because I'm gonna mix it with yellow and it's gonna make green anyway. But if you are getting muddy, you might actually be lifting some of that black. So I would just say, just be a little bit more gentle, um, but don't worry about it too much because then when we do our second pass, we're gonna brighten everything up with with fresh, brighter, lighter paint. Does that help, Wendy, I hope? Cool. 
All right, so now is actually a point where I definitely want to clean my brush because I've got green on it and my next move needs to be yellow. So I definitely wanna take off that green because I don't want my yellow to just turn green. So again, I will wipe off, knock over my water bottle, get a paper towel and just kind of squeeze off as much paint as possible and then give it a good clean rinse in my cup of water. Or if you're near your sink, go ahead and just give it a good rinse, especially with yellow, because it's so light, it can get ruined pretty easily. So I'm gonna make sure this is nice and clean and dry that off. <laughs> All right, so my brush is nice and clean and dry, and I can go in and grab a nice hunk of yellow and start creating the yellow base. And here we wanna be really, um, I guess, gentle with our strokes here because it will pick up that black, it's so light, and our brush strokes will be quite visible as well. But don't worry too much about that because again, we're just going to treat this again with a lighter and brighter color. If you want, you can even start blending into some of that green. I can't help myself. A good blend. So if you look at um, the one I'm doing, you can kind of see right here, it's getting a little bit muddy because that black is shining through, right? So don't panic, that's totally fine. I will, I will touch that up later. So don't worry if you have some of those, those muddy streaks shining through. Everything is fixable at this point. So for those of you who um, are very technical, uh, I'm about halfway across my canvas, maybe a little bit more than halfway. And the rest is going to be uh, kind of pinky reds and purples. So actually I might extend my yellow just a little bit more so I can get some kind of oranges to come out maybe. All right. And because I'm going for orange, I don't have to wipe my brush. I can just grab a smidgey smooch of red and start blending over top of that. Get a cool little peach almost. And from there, I can just keep adding some more red. And eventually all of this red is gonna become like a pinky purpley. Something like that. Mm. <clears throat> Let's see if I can mute that. There we go. I can't find who's barking. <laughs> oh, it's me. And I, for some reason, I couldn't get my video to work. My camera's not working, but that's my dog, King. Somebody, probably the township snowplow just went by. Oh. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Karen Comstock. I could see you, but I but I can't see. I'm not on there for some reason because my camera is not working. Okay. I'm just trying to find you so we can mute. So I but I can't. Um, I'm above Philadelphia LLBA. Oh, uh, it might be different for me. I have a different view. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I couldn't figure out how to change my name. I renamed myself. Not a problem. All right, so um, again, if you are kind of catching up, um, once I finished up that yellow, I grabbed some red and started kind of blending in to get uh, an orangey color. And then I went ahead and kind of went the rest of the way with red because now I can um, grab some, actually I am gonna clean my brush because I do have some yellow there and eat, if I want purple, I don't want any yellow in it. Cause again, uh, a yellow will muddy up a purple. So I'm gonna wipe off my excess paint, give my brush a good rinse, dry it off. And I can grab some blue to add to my red over here to get kind of a purpley. I think I want this one to be a bit more red than I had on the left. Yeah, something like that. Okay. All right. I think I'm good with my kind of first primed coats of these colors. I can sit tight for a minute just to um, make sure everybody is caught up. In the meantime, if, if you um, do have your video on or you care to share, uh, if you want to hold up what you've got, I love, oh, I love it. Yep, love it. Oh my gosh, these look so good already. Oh, I love it. These look great. I love them. Oh my gosh, they look great. Thank you, Lisa, for choosing this painting. I think Lisa chose it, I suggested it. This is, these are gorgeous. Oh, oh, so vibrant. Love. Awesome work. Awesome work. Beautiful. All right. So um, what we definitely want to do is make sure that our brush is nice and clean for our next moves here. because we're gonna, we're gonna basically kind of touch up adding a few more layers of really bright colors, which is essentially adding white to each color that we've made. So if we can compare these, this one we can see is much more vibrant right, than the one we're working on. And you do that by just building up another layer or several layers of um, those colors with white pigment in it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Again, I cleaned my brush. It's nice and clean and dry. And what I'm going to do is in my fancy palette here, I'm going to tap into some blue, 
we're just going to kind of restart from the beginning, grab some blue and just a little touch of white. I don't want to go too bright too soon. And I'm just going to see what that does to my painting. In other words, it's, I'm going to see if I like it. <laughs> oh yeah, that's cool. So just that little bit of white with some of my blue. And I can start adding these brighter, gosh, they, they are like flames, like little filaments of light. And I, I would recommend just a little paint at a time. We can always add more. If we go in guns blazing, it, it, we can get, um, it just gets a little bit tricky sometimes if you wanna remove that paint. So I'm just gonna kind of go over all those areas that were blue with this now lighter blue mixture. And to take care of that light lavender in the corner, I'm gonna grab some red and add it to the mix here. You get a nice light purple. Something like that. Yeah, and have fun with kind of adding maybe a little bit more white each each time. And that's how you're gonna build up these, these filaments or little flames of color here. And again, I think I mentioned this before, um, to get that nice contrast of the trees against the lights, um, you want those colors to get pretty bright down below. Um, I want mine to be brighter than I've done here in the original. I think the yellow and the green works, but I'm gonna try to get those nice, nice and bright. All right, once I'm happy with the bright blues and purples there, I'm gonna wipe off any excess paint from my brush, give it a good clean rinse because I wanna work on greens. Same idea, I'm gonna grab some blue, grab some yellow in my palette here, and then a little touch of white to brighten that up. Let's see what happens over my green. Oh yeah, that's fun. I'm using very little paint, I can always add more.
get nice and loose and swirly. I can pause here before I move on to my yellow, just to make sure everybody's um, caught up. I'm not going too fast. I do, I do know that I tend to go fast. So I am going to uh, wipe off my brush here. Give that a good clean rinse. Actually, I'm gonna refill my cup. <clears throat> Oh, I see, I see them looking good. Love it. Oh, these are fun. Oh, they're gorgeous. Very cool. Oh my gosh, is that a real rooster? <laughs> Robin, is that real? <laughs> Just seeing that there is a rooster or a chicken of some sort. Yeah, he's real. <gasps> he's That's him in my bedroom, but he lives in my she shed where I'm painting right now. Oh, okay. He's right here. I'm gonna do oh, oh it's, a, it's a photo, I see. <laughs> No, no, but he's real. Oh That's my Joe Frazier. That's Joe Talk. Joe Frazier. <laughs> His name is Joe Frazier. He's he's real. That's him. Do you see him? I well, I, I think I see him. Oh, there he is. Oh my god. That's his perch in my she shed. Yeah, he's in my shed now. Yeah. Love it. He's a pet. He's a pet. He's paper trained and everything. And that's his perch. That's with awesome. His towels and his blanket. Yeah. He paints with me and he does Reiki therapy with me too. So he's quite good at it. Daisy, everyone's is gonna look different. Even, even the one I'm painting looks different from mine. <laughs> um, but I promise, and if I haven't said this before, um, definitely sleep on these. They always look better the next day. Um, and they look real good when you take a picture of them with your, with your camera on your phone. But we are not done yet. We are not done yet. Um, I am going to now tend to my yellow. I want that to get nice and bright. So I'm gonna grab some yellow in my palette, grab some white, and let's brighten up this yellow here. Oh yeah, this is my favorite. I think the yellow is my favorite. Joe Beagle Boy. All right. That's nice and bright. And a little bit more. There we go. All right. 
Again, if you're if you you're starting to lift and we see some of that black, that's totally fine. There's there's no no worries there. Um, when you when you take a step back, it kind of adds to the the you know I don't know the the effect of those those lights, right? Um, so don't don't worry um, if it doesn't look like what I'm doing or it doesn't look like the photo that you have. Do not panic. There's no panicking in painting. All right, so once I've taken care of my yellow, I can start tending to my reds. And I just kind of jumped right into some red because red is such a powerful color. It's not really gonna care that there's yellow on my brush. All right, something like that. Cool. All right, I'm going to I'm going to take a step back and Take a look around, see how we're doing. Our next step is really fun. We're going to be putting on the, oh, love it. Love it. I'm like a, a dog who sees squirrels. It's like, oh, painting. Oh, I love it. Oh, these are so cool. Oh my gosh, they look great. Oh, we're going to put stars on and then we're going to put trees on and you're going to be amazed at what you've done. Let's see what else we got going on over here. Beautiful. Oh, these are, these are, oh, they're like fire. I love it. Love it. Oh, beautiful. How pretty are these? Very nice. Oh, very nice. In your little spiral book. That's awesome. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. <clears throat> all right, so I'm all set with my colors here. I'm going to wipe off my excess paint and get my brush nice and clean. And for our stars, we are gonna want, actually, I said I never add water. Um, for our stars, we are gonna add water um, to our white, to a little bit of white paint to get the right consistency. Um, and if your cup of water is like a, a hot mess, then I would say, just get some fresh water, especially when we make these stars. Um, I want some nice fresh water to get our consistency right for the stars, but I will I will do that in a minute um, in case people are still working. Um, there are a number of ways to do stars. Um, I will show you the the paint spatter method. Um, if you are in a place where you do not want to get paint everywhere, then um, you can do a different method. Which, um, if you have a small brush, you can just use the handle of the brush, kind of like as a stamper and you just take some white paint and you dot, dot, dot. Um, it takes a bit longer and it's not nearly as fun, but if you don't wanna ruin your furniture, um, I would, I would uh, go with that, with that method, that technique. Um, but the spatter method is really fun and I will show you and teach you a way to do it that it doesn't get kind of out of control. Um, there's no, for example, there's no reason to have, you know, wave around your, your brush like a magic wand. Um, so I will, I will talk you through that. It might be a little 
hard because you do want your painting on a flat surface. I've been painting with the easel. So I think I can make this work if I just adjust my uh, tripod here. How about I get that set up? While you guys are finishing up, let's see. I'm just gonna tilt it. Oh yeah, we'll just tilt this. And then I can put this down here. Oh yeah, we got this. All right, so um, again, the stamp method, I can show real quick. Um, I just have a, a smaller brush with a round end. And if I just dip into some white paint, I can, you know, tap little stars here and there. These um, will be much bigger than if you do paint spatter. So you can see this, this one up there is pretty, pretty big. So you can do that method, okay? Um, the paint splatter method, I will uh, show you um, the, the best technique that I've developed over time um, that doesn't get things too crazy. And it's really important to get the consistency of your paint right, okay? I'm not using a special brush. I'm still using my handy dandy flat angled brush. I do recommend a flat brush if you have it, okay? Um, because of the, the technique that we're doing is we're gonna, you're gonna hold a couple of fingers out and you're gonna tap your fingers with the brush. And I've found that the flat brush works well for me. Having said that, I've never tried it with another brush, so I, I don't know. Um, but consistency of the paint is gonna be key here. Um, I always say it's kind of like heavy cream. So I'm gonna dip just the tippity tips of my bristles in some water. You can see my water is not perfectly clean, that's fine. So just the tippity tips. And with the tippity tips of those bristles, I'm going to touch some white paint. I'm just gonna to touch it. The water will do the rest. And I'm just gonna tap, tap, tap. That's a little bit too runny. I'm gonna keep tapping until I get a thick, heavy cream consistency. And if you've got brown paper or a tablecloth, highly recommend giving a test run. You do not, with this method, if the consistency is right, you don't need to be far from your canvas. I'm just like a few inches above the surface here. I'm gonna give a test run up here on this paper. And I just give a little tap and oh, I'm seeing you can't see that on the paper. Okay, let me just do it on the canvas. Um, let me grab some more. So I'm just holding my fingers out very close to the canvas and I'm just gonna tap, 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 tap. Okay. If you tap and nothing happens, you need more water, okay? Um, if you tap and you get a whole like blob coming off, um, you've got too much paint and too much strength maybe, okay? So I highly recommend giving that a little test run. I'm gonna, I'll do it again. I just tapped, excuse me, dipped my bristles, just the tips in some water and I'm just going to tap next to my blob of white paint till it's like heavy cream. And then I just tap with two fingers. And I think I need a little bit more water because nothing's coming off here. There we go. The thicker the paint, the bigger the stars. So you might wanna add more water if your stars are looking real big or you're getting big blops. Again, highly recommend a little practice run on, you know, your uh, a paper plate or a tablecloth, a plastic tablecloth anyway. 
And I'm going to focus most of my stars up in the corners and the sides where our black sky is. But this tapping method on my two fingers, this is the most control I've, I've found in a paint spatter method. And you can also couple this with the, the stamp method with the, um, the back end of your handle if you kind of want to really uh, be in control of where, where the stars go. If you want to kind of fill in any spaces where you have complete and total control over where they end up. And just a little, a little tip, what I like to do with um, the, the handle stamp method is I also add just little, little tiny stars of yellow and even pink. I found that that, that helps um, show like different depths and just kind of a little bit more interest. So I'm just gonna add a little star here and there in yellow and pink. Are you dipping the yellow in water first or just doing straight yellow? Oh, good, good point. So with the stamp method, it's just straight paint. Yeah, good question. So stamp method, it's just, I dip it right into um, a blob of paint. So I'm sorry, what is the consistency for the splatter method? It's, um, to me, it's like heavy cream. Um, okay. So definitely thicker than milk, but definitely not like sour cream. Um, my paint, I would say, is kind of like sour cream to begin with. So I add water to get it kind of like a, a heavy whipping cream. And then with my test runs, I can figure out like, okay, do I need more water? It's not coming off my brush. I need more water. <clears throat> okay, I'll be right back. I'm going to the bathtub to try the splatter okay. method. <laughs> okay, good luck. <laughs> yeah. Testing is a good idea because I have spatter all over my laptop. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that part. Yes. Watch your devices. Although, um, not that I know from personal experience, but acrylic on, on laptops and things, they just scrape off real easy when they're dry. Also, um, if it gets on clothing or hair and you don't catch it right away with like just water and soap, um, yes, thank you, Carolyn. Rubbing alcohol will take, will take it off, yeah. Yeah, so I definitely have like those, um, those alcohol prep pads. I use those on clothing um, all the time and sometimes hair. All right, I'm gonna put this camera back up. Oh no, <laughs> Bree, your friend accidentally took the coating off her laptop screen with a Clorox wipe, oh no. <laughs> Life lessons.
Yes, expensive mistakes. All right. So I don't know if you can see, but the ones that I just did, those stars are a lot bigger than my original. And that's probably because I made them a little too wet. In fact, they're almost dripping, but that's totally fine. So we'll sit tight here as you are wrapping up your stars. And then, all, yes, it's a planet <laughs> or a shooting star. Um, so uh, our next step is just um, black paint for our trees down below, straight out of the Bob Ross handbook. I can wipe off my brush free from the white paint. We like Bob Ross here. <laughs> yes. Uh huh. Love that, Bob I mean, Ross. When I was a kid, I that's I watched that on TV, and that's he basically taught me everything I know. <laughs> it was so relaxing. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh, I was entranced. Even even yeah. as a kid, I, it was just every, like wow. Every time, I loved it. <laughs> All right, I'm curious about these stars. Anybody care to share? Have we come back from the bathtub? <laughs> we have. I Excellent. have a shooting star too. Excellent. Oh, I love it. These look so good. Definitely getting galaxy vibes. Very, very pretty. Oh, these look great. Beautiful. All oh, these, some of these colors are gorgeous. Oh, I think my connection is unstable. I hope I'm still here. Okay. Looking good out there. Jackie, can we see that brush you used to make the yellow stars? Mine look like mustard stains. Um, it's just, this is my, I'm kind of embarrassed to show you, but this is my thin, thin brush. Okay. And it's just the handle that I haven't taken the tag off yet and has a bunch of dried paint on it. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's the thinnest one um, that I've got at my disposal right now. All right. So for our trees, um, I would say if you're feeling nervous about it, please don't be. We've set ourselves up for success here because we've got these great, gorgeous colors and that black contrast is gonna be awesome no matter how we make our trees, no matter what technique we use, okay? So I can show you um, some different ones, all right? Um, so I'm still using my flat brush, okay? My flat angled brush. Uh, Bob Ross always used a fan brush for his evergreen trees. Um, I don't have a fan brush or it's in my basement somewhere. I don't feel like getting it. And I've, I've tend to use this, this bad boy, this brush for my Bob Ross style trees. So I'll show you that a couple of times but there are a number of ways to do these trees, okay? So don't, don't worry about the technique you choose. Do whatever um, you feel good about. All right, so I'm gonna start with my, my big one, my tall guy who's kind of right in the middle. Um, and he goes up pretty far, almost, I would say to the midpoint of the canvas. I'm just gonna tap, um, this is, I feel like I'm just copying Bob Ross because this is what he did. I'm gonna tap to find that tree top 
Okay. And then let me bring this up to the lens so you can see. I'm going to take the corner of my brush. So even if you don't have an angled brush, a regular flat brush would be fine. I'm going to take the corner and just tap. Okay. And I'm going to keep tapping and moving back and forth. This is just the corner of my brush. And all I'm doing is tapping. Okay. Again, I'll keep going. I tapped the top to find the top of that tree. I took the corner of my brush and tapped and I just tap and rock back and forth. And because this is an evergreen tree, I want it to get wider and wider as we go down. All I'm doing is tapping. All I'm doing is totally copying what Bob Ross told me to do, just tapping. And as I get down lower and lower, I can start um, not just using the corner of that brush, but using the full, um, the full bristle. And I'm just gonna keep tapping down, down, down. And that's a Bob Ross evergreen tree. I will show that again. I need to give myself some more black paint. All right, I think I'm going to put this guy over here, give him a friend, as Bob Ross would say. So tap the, the treetop there. Got, I've got a fair amount of paint on my brush, but I don't want it gloppy because I want to be in control. All right, again, I'm going to take the corner and tap, tap it again, and just move back and forth. And I'm going to tap. Um, harder as I go down, and I'm going to use more of those bristles as I go down, just moving back and forth. Again, he used um, a fan brush. My little angle brush has worked fine for me. Jackie, are you going to the very bottom of the painting with that tree? I am, good question, yes. So once I get towards the bottom, I don't get too fancy because all of this is gonna get probably solid black eventually. Um, but I just bring that all the way down and kind of just tap in, fill in anything. All right, so another, another method, um, it's kind of similar. Uh, I can tap, tap a little treetop and you can use the tippity tips of your bristles almost like a stamp and you can stamp them down a side. It's very similar to the first technique, but you kind of go one side at a time and just get bigger and bigger, wider and wider and you can kind of fill in. And still another technique is a little bit more gloppy. <laughs> I'll put this guy over here. And I'm just gonna kind of smudge. I'm using the thin corner of my brush now and I'm just kind of smudging I feel like half of painting is just being comfortable with smudge and imperfection. And I'm just, I'm not showing you anymore. There we go. Just kind of still a little tappy tappy, but this is a bit more gloppy because I'm kind of putting on more paint and I'm using the thinner corner of my angled brush. 
it's kind of a thin, a thin little tree over there. And I think I want these to taper and get shorter and shorter as I go over. You can just kind of play with different different techniques. So here you can kind of use thin lines to pull out little branches. Maybe this guy lost his needles. And, or you can paint on individual needles. There's a bunch of different ways to do these trees. It's totally up to you. Again, we've set ourselves up with success um, with these bright colors and any contrast of black on top of that is, is gonna look awesome. Despite what you may believe about yourself. <clears throat> And if you're not happy with your trees and you really want to kind of nail the, the Bob Ross technique, just like get a piece of paper and just do it a whole bunch of times until you figure out what's going to work for you. I've been painting these Bob Ross trees for what, like 30 years <laughs> since I've been watching the man. And I got my first paint set when I was in elementary school because I wanted to paint like him. So it takes a lot of practice, but you totally can do it. Let's see, I want to hold my over here. And my over here. All right. I think that's all she wrote for me. Let's see what's going on in your house. Sad little trees. Sad little, no, happy, happy trees. <laughs> happy accidents, happy trees. <gasps> Love it. Oh my gosh, they look great from Audrey Lee's iPad. Who else? Very, very pretty. Oh, oh man, these colors. Oh, they look so good. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, you guys. They are looking awesome, gorgeous, beautiful. The colors, the contrast with the trees. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Looking good. Nice. My trees are big blobs. <laughs> that can happen. That might mean that you had too much paint um, on your brush. But again, just, just give a little test run practice, practice, and you can, you can really like bang out those trees really quickly. Oh, they look great. Yep. Beautiful. Beautiful. Be sure to uh, snap a picture and tag. Um, maybe Lisa will put that info back in the chat and tag um, the alumni. Of course, I can't think of the, the ads and the social medias, but you know how to do social media. Just share it there. <laughs> um, we'd love to see all of your, all of your paintings.
your lights look more like grass than sky, but it was fun. Well, if you had fun, then I'll take it, but I'm sure your painting looks better than you think. It oh, these are great. Yes. Love it. Thumbs up. Audra Lee's iPad. Yes. Gorgeous. These are gorgeous. Liz Paget looking good. Judith looking good. They look gorgeous. Elizabeth. I feel like Romper Room. I see Betty and Jacqueline. Oh and gosh. <laughs> Forgot about Romper Room back there. <laughs> I don't think they ever said my name. They said my sister's name and I was so upset. They never said my name either. I watched it every day. <laughs> say Bonnie, please say Bonnie. Never heard it. <laughs> Come on. I love that show. <laughs> I know, I loved Romper Room. We're all dating ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> Stacy, sleep on it and I promise you won't hate it. Oh, there's there's all the socials. Socials. Yeah. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the things. Hashtag, there it is. Hashtag P S A A P. No. Hashtag P S A A Paint Night. There it is. Yeah. These all look gorgeous. Oh yeah. PSA, -A, what was it? <laughs> uh, it's in the chat, hashtag PSAA paint night. Okay, thank you. Sure. Beautiful. I, St Stacey, that just like, looks gorgeous. Libby, gorgeous. Awesome work. Beautiful. Well, thank you all once again for having me for um, a remote paint night. Um, this might be one of the few good things that came out of COVID for me was to, to be uh, on here with all of you um, every once in a while. And uh, hopefully we'll see you next time. I can stick around if anybody has questions, but I'm guessing that Lisa will um, shut down the meeting shortly. Good work, sleep on it. It will be better tomorrow, I promise. So question, at the end, do you like cover over the bottom and make it all black? Is that the idea? At the, at the, very, the very bottom edge there? Very bottom. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I like to do. You don't, you don't have to do that, but I, I kind of like finishing off all black so we get that, that contrast up top. So I'm adding white to mine because you can't see one of my trees. <laughs> Oh yeah, so you might find, yeah. Yeah, if there's not enough contrast, it might disappear. And the question about the paint, yes, it is acrylics. It's, um, I use this really cheap um, acrylic. It's Artist Law, if you can get it at Michael's. Um, but when I do these paint events, because it's cheaper, I, I use the cheap paint. Much, Thank much you. Thank you Bye. so much for painting. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. This is fun. Jackie, what's next? Next painting? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Lisa picked a good one. Maybe I'll let her pick them next time, too. Well, thank you very much. It was great. I'm so glad. Thank you. All right, do we have any more questions before I close this down? Thanks a lot. That was a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jackie. Thanks, Lisa. See you next Bye -bye. time. Bye.